Hello, in this video we are going to talk about this thing, how to make it. What is it? What is it doing? Why does it look so hypnotic? Why can't I stop staring at it? So, uh, what you are looking at is a visual representation of the numbers from 1 to 128. So the taller a column is, the bigger that number is. If the column's only one pixel tall, then that number is 1. And this program is building a list of numbers from 1 to 128, and then randomizing the order that they're in, and then sorting them back into uh, ascending order. And notice that we've got this kind of left to right um, action kind of thing going on here. And then also there's a, a variable being displayed at the top that says top index. So we'll, I'll explain what, what's going on there. Um, conceptually, we, are, uh, we have a list of 128 things, and we're going to say, okay, you know what, sort the first two then sort the first three, then sort the first four, sort the first five, and that uh, is why the list kind of gets sorted going from left to right like that. So you actually have to make 128 passes over that list in order to get the thing uh, put into ascending order. Let's go pop over to a presentation and look at that a little more, um, I don't know, in, in detail and depth. So this process is called selection sort. It is a particular sorting algorithm. There are many. Selection sort is fairly easy to understand, though, which makes it nice for our purposes. Why make it hard when we don't have to? So how does it work? Well, imagine we had a list of things. Could be 100 things, we'll say. Let's make a variable called top, and that's how long we're going to pretend the list is. We're going to pretend it has two things in it. And then we're going to scan across our data and we're going to look at every element from the start of the list up to top. If we find an element in the list that's bigger than the, the one in the, at the top, we're going to exchange them. So things that are, are bigger will tend to get bubbled to the right. And once we've scan, made our pass through our, our, our list, and moved the biggest one into the top position, we're going to add one to top and then repeat the process. So the first time we run through our list, we'll sort the first two things, and then we'll sort the first three things and the first four things until we've sorted all 100 things. We're gonna make 99 passes over the data. And uh, every iteration, every, every scan, we're gonna move the biggest one we found to the, to the right. To the top position. And if we do that enough times, eventually the data will end up in ascending order. Let's look at it as a picture. So imagine we've got a list that's got four things in it. We're going to start, we set, we set top to two, and we say, okay, we're going to make it, we're going to scan through the data. We're going to start at the first thing and scan, uh, compare everything to the one in index two, which is what top is currently storing. So is the thing in slot one bigger than the thing at the top? And the answer is, in this case, no. So, and we've scanned, we've done our complete scan, we're done. We scanned everything up to top, so now we add one to top and repeat. So now we're gonna make another pass, pass two. So we've added one to top, top is now three. So we're gonna compare everything from the start of the list up to top. If it's bigger than top, we're gonna switch it. So. Uh, if, when I say bigger than top, I mean bigger than the value at, in the, it, at the top. So is the 10 bigger than the 6? Yeah. So we switch them. So now we end up with that. And then we look at the next thing in the list. Is the 12 bigger than the 10? Well, yeah. So we switch them. And we're done with that pass. We've scanned everything up to top. Now, so we just... Repeat the, repeat the recipe, right? Repeat the formula. Add one to top. So top is now four. There we go. And we're going to compare everything to the thing at the top. So is the six bigger than the seven? No. So we don't do anything. How about the ten? Is the ten bigger than the thing at the top? Yes. So we switch them. And then we go on to the next thing. Is the twelve bigger than the thing at the top? Yeah. So we switch them. And look, our stuff is in ascending order. So, so that's it. Uh, what we need to do is to, to, to make that scan is we need a for loop that's going to go from 2 to top 
and we're going to say if the value in the list at our loop counter, which is probably i, is greater than the thing in the list at top, switch them. And after that, we make enough passes, the data will all be in, sorted into ascending order. So let's pop over to the code. Well, actually, you can kind of, you know, here, you now you can maybe understand this just a little bit better, what it's doing. So the the top index, that's that's top. That's the value of top. So we're sorting the first 40, 40 50, 60, 70, 80, you know, something, you know, now sorting the first 90, 100 things, and we're just repeatedly scanning over that list, putting the biggest one we find in the top index. And if we do that, uh, enough times for the, the one time for everything in the list, then eventually the thing ends up sorted. So let's go to the code and take a look at what you have to do. You just have to do three steps. So step one, well let's take a look at what we've got in our init function first. This program is driven by an alarm. So I assume you have your alarm library and there, the alarm zero is really what drives the program. When alarm zero fires or goes off, it calls a function called tick, and tick calls a function called sort. That is where you're going to be doing some of your code, but I'll get to that later. Alarm one is just used to reset the program once all the data has been sorted. List stores the numbers that we're going to make. It's going to store the data to sort. And top, that's the variable that we're going to use um, as our index, right? It's, it's, how, it's how far, how big we're pretending the list is, and it's the, the index of the value we're going to check. Uh, when, every time we say, okay, is, the thing, is this thing bigger than the one at the top? When you say at, if you're thinking at the top, at, that's square brackets, at the top, square brackets. So, so that's all we've got. You don't have to do anything with these alarms. Here's your list. You're going to have to put some numbers in there. You've got a variable called top um, to use. That's how big you're, you're going to pretend your list is. And it's also the biggest index. That's where you're going to put the biggest thing you find. It's, it's going to go in top. All right, so step one. Use a for loop to populate the indexes 1 to 128 with the numbers from 1 to 28, right? So make a for loop that goes from 1 to 128, and, you know, you'll have a loop counter called i, you know, 4i, 0, 128, something like that. Put i into the list, and eventually you'll just, the first time through the list you'll add a 1, the sec or the first time through the loop you'll add a 1, the second time you'll add a 2, third time you'll add a 3, fourth time you'll add a 4. You're just putting the numbers from 1 to 128 into a list. That's it. Excuse me. That's it. Okay. Step two. Now we need to randomize the list. How do we randomize the list? I can think of two ways to do this. So the way I've, I've listed here, imagine that you want to shuffle some cards. You could pull a card out of the middle and stick it on the top. Right? That would work too. Or that, that, that works. So uh, we just pick a, pick a card to pull out of the deck. Right? Generate a number between 1 and 128 and delete that number from the list using the del command. So go to the cheat sheet, look at the del command, see how it works. And after you've deleted that number from the list, add it back to the list. So what does that accomplish? Well, when you add something, it gets added to the end. So what you're doing is pulling something out of the middle and then sticking it on the end. And then you want to put that in, that, that in a for loop that runs a thousand times or so, a hundred, five hundred, I don't know, whatever, just a whole lot of times. And that way, you know, you're just going to pull a card out of the middle, stick it on the top. Pull a card out of the middle, stick it on the top. Pull a card out of the middle, stick it on the top. And eventually the data will all get just kind of shuffled, get scrambled. All right. So another way I could think to do that um, is to generate two random numbers and use those as indexes and exchange the values at those indexes. This requires a temporary variable, um, but if you're up to the challenge, give it a shot. And then put that code in a for loop that runs a thousand times. So a thousand times pick two random numbers, exchange the values at those indexes. That will also shuffle the, the list. All right, now here is the guts of the whole thing. This is where we make one pass through the array. We're going to scan the values from indexes, oops, where did it go? Actually, from, in, yeah, from index one up to, up to top. We're going to scan from the, the first re, uh, index up to top, and if we find a value at index 
you know, whatever, if we have a for loop and our loop counter is i, if the value at, at index i is bigger than the value at index top, exchange them, switch those two values. This is gonna require a temporary, a temporary variable. I want you to kind of bash your head against it and, and see if you understand why you need a temporary very variable. But um, you're gonna need a for loop, you know, use i as your loop counter, uh, and if you can find a value, if the value in index, at index i is bigger than the value at index top, exchange those two, uh, the contents of those two indexes, and that will, that, that will bubble the biggest number toward the right. And then after you've done your for loop, you want to add one to top, because the next time the timer ticks and the sort function gets called, you want to pretend that your list is one bigger. So that's all you have to do. And um, so as, a, as a note to anybody who's taken Java and has done sorting algorithms in, in your Java class, you probably had a for loop inside of a for loop when you did this because you need to make, you know, 100, maybe say like 128 passes over the data and each one of those passes you have to examine 128 items. So that's a for loop inside of a for loop. So you may be thinking, why do I only need one for loop here? Where's the other for loop? And the answer is, we are using a timer to drive the sorting process, not a for loop. And the ex advantage of doing this is that we actually get to see the thing run. If we just put a for loop inside of a for loop and said, sort this thing, you know, make 128 passes over this thing, and then each pass, you know, do our for loop do our scan, well then the thing would execute immediately and we'd never actually get to see it kind of run incrementally. We wouldn't get to see the data bubble to the right and get kind of get to see, get to visualize how it works. So the kind of think of your outer loop as being driven by this alarm. Every time this alarm ticks, we're going to make one pass over the data and um, and sort the list, uh, you know, um, from indexes one up to top. So our our outer loop is being driven by the alarm. So that's all you have to do though. So your, your, the guts is just, you just need one for loop in here that makes a pass over the data and sorts and, and takes the biggest thing it finds and sticks it in the, 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 the top index. And, uh, and if you do that, you should see this, right? You should see that running. But um, again, this is gonna be, there's a little, it's a little tricky. I, I want you to give it a try. I want you to understand what you're doing. Um, uh, as well as getting it syntactically correct. So uh, by all means, ask for help, um, but um, I, I kind of want you to bash your head against it and, and see if you can understand um, how, how, you know, how, how to get it to do what it needs to do. All right, thank you. Hope that somewhat clarified this, this activity. It's really kind of fun to watch, and I'm just going to sit here and stare at it for a while longer.